Have you ever wondered what really goes into the price tag of that luxurious foundation or that favorite lipstick you love to wear? I'm gonna peel back the layers of the makeup industry and show you all what it takes to actually create some of your favorite beauty products. We'll talk about the development, formulation, and packaging of some of your favorite beauty products out there so you can be a smart shopper and know when you are spending your money on a quality product and when you're just getting ripped off. Before we get into some actual sample products I'm gonna show you, let's talk about all of the components that go into making a product from start to finish. This is what you are paying for. Number one is the packaging and the component. I'm not talking about the box that comes in, the actual component that holds the makeup product. The next item that you're paying for is the formula inside, the actual makeup product that you are putting on your face. Then the third part that you have is the actual box that it comes in. That's a third step, another manufacturer that has to make that. And then a couple things that are actually not tangible but are really important and really factor into the price of your product is the branding and marketing and then also the distribution. Where is it sold? Is it direct to consumer? Is it in a major retailer? All of those things really start impacting the price of your favorite beauty product because all of those things cost a lot of money. Now let's talk about in order of what is costing the most. And it's not what you guys think. I know you guys are probably like, well, it's the makeup Marlena. It's actually not that's at the bottom. The first thing that you are paying for that is the most expensive thing is the distribution. Now, when makeup products go to any store, and I'm not talking even just about the two big ones, the Sephora and Ulta. It could be a drugstore, it could be Target, it could be an international online wholesaler. Anytime a product is distributed somehow, there's a huge cost to that. Most retailers or distributors are going to charge between 50 to 70% of the cost of that item just to have it in store. So for example, this is not $10 by the way, but say a makeup product is $10. If I were to sell this product in say, we'll just use these as examples, in an Ulta or a Sephora, me, as a brand owner, I am going to have to pay that brand between five to seven dollars just to have it in store. And I know you guys are like, what? That's so expensive. But think about it. The retailer has their own business model that they have to support. They have staff, they have overhead, they have theft and loss, they have insurance for their employees, they have all of these expenses that they have to run. And in order to cover that, they have to have enough profit margins to pay for all of that. And that ends up going back to the brand owner that makes the products, making sure their margins are wide enough to be able to hand off 50 to 70% to that retailer or distributor. Now, the second thing that you're paying for is the marketing. Now, depending on how established the brand is, most established brands are gonna pay between 10 to 20% in marketing costs. So again, if this product costs $10, an established brand, a big brand, is going to budget in between one to $2 alone just on marketing. If it's a new brand and they really have to get their name out there and, and become well-known, sometimes they have to budget between 20 to 30% on marketing costs. Now with me, I was a little bit different story with Makeup Geek. I was able to keep my margins really tight because I was on YouTube, I was known in that space and I was able to market my products. So I was able to cut my costs down a bit on the marketing. And that's a whole nother conversation, you guys. We will do a separate video on later on the business side of things, but marketing is the number two thing you're paying for. And then the third most expensive thing you're paying for is the packaging, the component that holds the product. That actually costs more than the formula that's inside. So when you see a lot of professional brands such as RCMA, Krylon, Mayron, they have a really, really simple, almost kind of cheap looking packaging because they're saving costs there so they can use their funds to pay for a better quality product side. So if you guys are looking for a quality makeup product, but packaging really isn't that important to you, try to go for a professional brand because their budget is going more into product versus packaging. But for the average consumer, we like pretty things. We want things that are shiny or have really cool designs on them or have a soft touch feel to that, those all add up and that can be more expensive than the product inside. Now, the fourth thing that you're paying for then is the makeup product itself. And depending on where it's made, there's some top players. There's Italy, there's Canada, US, and there's China. Those are the top players. There are some other countries that do make cosmetics, but those are the biggest ones. If a product is made in Italy for say versus say China, the price difference in the formula is going to vary greatly because of the cost of labor and possibly Possibly the cost of materials used, the higher grade quality ingredients are gonna cost a little bit more than some less expensive one, depending on what they're using.
packaging. So there's a lot of variants inside there that can adjust the price of the formula. But again, packaging is gonna cost more than the product itself. And then the last but not least fifth thing that you are paying for is the box on the outside. A lot of people don't think about it because it's like we open it up and we, we get our product out and we like chuck that box and we're like, don't think about it. But the brand has to budget that in because that still costs money to have a box that you have to ship the product in. So there's your five layers of things that it takes to actually make a product happen. Okay, so now that we have covered all of the different things, I wanna actually take some sample products. I'm gonna walk you through the process as a professional. If you guys are new to my channel, you don't know who I am. My name's Marlena. I've been a cosmetic product developer and brand owner for almost 15 years. I've been doing this a long time. I've learned a lot of lessons along the way, some very hard lessons, I will admit, but I'm gonna take some popular makeup items and show you whether I think they are ripping you off. Are you paying the right price for this product or is a brand just overcharging you and you're paying out your butt for nothing. Okay, that was really blunt, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, let's start with this one. It's a new palette that has launched. It's the Natasha Nonona I Need a Nude Palette. Okay, box we've already tossed. That's gone. That's a cost that's at the bottom, but that's something that was paid for by the brand. Okay, packaging. Let's start with that. As you guys can see, this is a plastic packaging. It has a clear lid right here that is raised. It has an imprinted logo on the top. When I run my finger over it, that is a hot pressed stamp on there. It's a little bit of a charge on there, not a ton, but this design and this plastic cover here, this is all actually a little bit pricey. This is custom added on here. The other thing on the package, when you turn it around, there's a texture on here that is a soft touch finish. That is an upcharge to any component that a brand is doing. If it has a soft touch feeling on it, the brand pays extra to have that done. And then also on this, you see that there's a bunch of holes in here. That is custom tooled specifically for this brand that has to add that so people can punch out their eyeshadows on the back. So that's another added cost that they're paying for. Then when you open it up inside, there's a full size mirror that gets a little bit pricey. I would say pricing, last time I checked, the price for a full size mirror was around one to two dollars, which I know doesn't sound a lot, but when you're talking about just for the mirror alone, adds up really quick. And then if you all can see inside, there's another plastic piece in here that is raised. That's an extra piece that has to be tooled in there because it's not just like a cardboard flat palette. It's a separate insert that is raised. It's a different level than this. And then you have a different type of clear plastic in here. All of those things are actually pretty expensive to do. So they definitely pay top dollar for packaging. Now let's talk about the product inside. So this has 15 eyeshadows in here. And when I look at the back, it tells me it is, gosh, that is, some small print, you guys, 16.7 grams and there's 15 pans. So that means that there's just over a gram of product per pan. Now the texture inside, the matte finishes have this really smooth, soft texture of them. When you have very finely milled powders like that, sometimes manufacturers will say it's triple milled. You'll see that in some of the advertising of some powders. That's an extra process. It's triple milled. It's three times that that powder has to be ground down to get it super, super fine. So that's a little bit extra charge in the product itself itself is getting a really smooth lying texture. And then also you guys will see several shimmers in here and you'll see a metallic. Metallics and shimmers cost more to make than matte finishes because of, they're called loosely pearls. It's different ingredients in there. Some brands use mica. They use different raw materials to get that effect. A lot of shimmer, that's gonna be an expensive formula. All that means is shimmers and metallics cost considerably more than a matte shadow. If last thing in a formula, let's take it where it's made. So when I look at the back of that teeny right there. It says made in Italy. Italy is the most expensive for labor. If I have any makeup products that I see that it's made in Italy, I know that they're probably paying a little bit more. Italy is the top one. Then it's Canada and USA are kind of on the second level. And then the third one would be like Korea. Korea is starting to make some more makeup. And then the bottom one, the least expensive is going to be China. So I see it's made in Italy. So I know that they're paying a bit more for the labor of the product itself. And the last bit of this palette, it is sold in major retailers. It's in Ulta stores. I think it's Sephora as well, but it isn't a major retailer. So we know that they're paying between 50 to 70 percent in payments to those retailers to be able to stock that product in store so everyone buying it can see it in person can go drive to their sephora beep, beep, go check it out go swatch it all of that so there's actually a lot of cost going into this palette so do i think for 69 dollars that natasha nodona is ripping you guys off i actually don't i think their margins are really really tight on this to be honest i don't think they're ripping you off i know 69 dollars is a lot for a palette but considering all of the costs that the brand is paying for the packaging, for the mirror, the product, it being made in Italy, lots of shimmers. It's in a major retailer. I don't think the brand is ripping you off. And I do feel like $69 is a fair price for that palette. 
Don't hate on me, you guys. I know you guys are like, I'm not paying $69 for palette. I understand. I'm just saying from a cost perspective, I don't think they're overcharging for what they paid for that palette to be made. I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger, you guys. Next product I have is the Jones Road Miracle Balm. Now, I know this has gotten a lot of attention all over TikTok. I don't care about the viral stuff, you guys. I just want to walk you through the process. So this product here is $38 and it is in a container like this. And it's a balm. This I got this color here. I bought this well many. It is a cheek balm that can give you a nice dewy effect to the skin. Okay, let's talk packaging first. I already tossed the box. That, that's what I threw over my shoulder. As you guys can see, this is a round tube like this that screws off. There's no soft touch. It's a clear plastic. I feel like this is a stock component. I don't see anything on here that is really customized or upgraded. And then also I see the logo on here is very smooth. There's no embossing or debossing or anything like that. It's just screen printed on the top of the lid. So that is pretty much a basic finish to any printing that you have done. Then I flip it around on the back and I see that it is a sticker label for the ingredient deck, which by the way, I'm not trying to bash the brand because I adore Bobbi Brown so much. She's been my idol since I was a teenager. However, let me show you this label. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's like really bumpy. It's not even applied on there really well. It's just really sloppy in the back. I was kind of disappointed when I got it. I was like, well, this is really cheap packaging. So I think packaging, they really didn't spend much at all. Now, now the size of this product is 50 grams. That's a really, really big product. So this will last you a long time. So I think for the product itself, they did spend a bit more because it's such a huge jar. So they have paid a little bit more for the size of the product that you get. Now I'm looking at the ingredient deck in here to see if there's anything expensive. I see castor seed oil, I see beeswax, um, I see jojoba oil. None of these things, in my opinion, are expensive ingredients at all. It's a pretty basic ingredient deck. I see some ginger root oil and maybe a couple things that might be a little bit more expensive, but they're further down the ingredient deck. So the number one ingredient is castor seed oil. And then the second one is beeswax. Those are not, in my opinion, last time I checked, expensive ingredients. So now let's talk about distribution because that's the number one thing. So I bought this myself on the Johns Road Beauty site. I really did want to try it because I love Bobbi Brown. Like I said, I don't see this in any stores. Correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. I'm looking online. I don't see it in a major retailer. I don't see it as Sephora and Ulta. So they're not paying that 50 to 70% in distribution unless they sell it overseas. That's another cost. You have to pay a distributor. If I want to sell in the UK, I need it to get to clients really quickly. Even if it's not a retailer, it's a distributor, I would have to pay for that. So there may be some costs there if people overseas are able to get this product. So that may be the case. But here in the US, I don't see it being sold in major retailers. So that cost is non-existent. And then lastly, the marketing. I don't know what their marketing cost is. If it's a well-known brand, they're paying between 10 to 20%. All of that is to say, do I feel like this product product is worth $38. I absolutely do not. It pains me to say that because I really am cheering on Bobby Brown. Because the packaging is so generic, there's not any up features to that. I don't think that the cost of this warrants a $38 price point. If I was pricing this product out, I would say between, I would say around $28 to $30 would be a fair price for this, but $38 just pushes it over the edge for me. I just don't feel like the value is there. Next product we have, let's walk you through, is the Patrick Tablash. You guys know I love these blushes. I have no bias to any of this, you guys. Even if I love the person making this product, I'm just gonna be really blunt and honest with you guys and walk you through the process of, is this, do I feel like this is worth the money or not? Okay, so this blush is $36. I bought it from Sephora. So let's talk about the packaging first. It has a rose gold finish to it, which there might be a slight upcharge to that because it's not just a traditional straight up silver or straight up gold. So I do think they might've paid just a little bit extra to get that rose gold finish. The logo on top is not raised, but I do feel a little bit of a texture on there. So it may have been hot stamped on there. It's just a very slight upcharge on there. When you flip on the back, there is a label, but it is cleanly done. And the label is rose gold, so it matches the packaging. That is a little bit of an upcharge on the label. It's not like the Jones Road one where plain white. This is actually colored to match the component. So there was a little extra cost that goes into that. Now, the component I have seen in my stockpile of componentry that I have, it is a stock component, but I think they did some customizations on it, such as the lid right here. So if you guys can see, because there's a, a cream blush and then there's a powder blush on the top and bottom, and then you have the full size mirror inside. So this is not an inexpensive component by any means, but they paid extra to get this flat one here to cover up that cream shadow, which is genius by the way, Patrick, great job on that. Okay, so now let's talk about where it's made. I'm seeing that this is made in the USA. So is it as expensive as Italy? No, but USA is still not cheap to manufacture in. It's not as cheap as say Korea or China. Not quite 
isn't as expensive as Italy, but there is still some cost there. Because the USA has certain labor laws, you have to pay at least minimum wage for all of their workers. So now let's talk about the formula itself. On the top is a cream and on the bottom is a powder. The cost of labor on this is going to increase because that's two runs on the production line that they have to go through. So when they are making a cream product, it's gonna be in one complete separate area to where they're making powders. So when this thing gets filled, they're gonna have one assembly line that's gonna drop in the pan that has the cream product and it's going to the other side and it's gonna drop in the powder. So that is an extra labor cost on the manufacturer side because it's not just one time of like, going a little conveyor belt, like dropping that pan in and going aside, you're gonna do it twice. One for the cream, one for the powder. So that's a double cost in production. Now the quality of the powder itself too, I feel like this powder is very finely milled. So I do feel like they're using a higher grade, either talc or mica. Let's see what's in here. Is she talc or is she mica? Oh, the first ingredient in the cream is synthetic florflogopite. That is a synthetic mica. That's actually a little bit more expensive than traditional mica because it's a synthetic, it costs more. So there is an extra cost in their ingredient deck because they used the florflogopite versus mica. Although there's mica in there as well. You guys, can, I'll link to it below so you guys can check out the ingredient deck. Yes, I do feel like they are not cheaping out on the ingredients used in this product. So I do think that they are using quality ingredients in this product. Okay. Now the last step is the distribution. This is sold in Sephora, which means that Sephora has to make money as well to sell this in store. So they are probably, let's do some calculations just to show you. I'm just going off of what I personally know of percentages in retail stores. Okay, so $36, let's say that the rate is 60%. That's not far off of what most brands would charge. So 36 times 60% would be $21.60 is what Sephora has to charge in order for them to sell it in store, which means $36 minus $21.60. So this is how much the brand has left per product to actually make. So they have to all in product packaging box. The label on the back has to be way less than this in order to make a profit themselves. So with all of that being said, do I think that this blush duo is worth $36? I absolutely do. I actually think that he's undercharging just a little bit based off of all of the pieces that are going into this, the packaging where it's made, the two colors, it's available at a major retailer, all of that. I think he could get away with charging $38 to $40. I know you guys are gonna hate me for this and still not be ripping you guys off. So I think that $36 is fair for this. Let's do a liquid product. And this is a product you guys know I love a lot. It was in my favorites list. So we're gonna walk through this still. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filters. And let's go over the pricing for this. Okay, so this is $49 for this tube. Box is gone, we know we already paid for that. Packaging, so this is a clear tube. This is a stock packaging. This is nothing custom, it's a glass tube with a lid. But I will say that the cap itself was customized. I don't know if you guys can pick it up on camera. So we have the customized rose gold finish. That is an upcharge. And you see that it has some ridges on here. That has to be custom custom molded to get the ridges. And then also on the cap, I don't know if you guys can see the logo here is debossed. It is imprinted lower. So there's a tooling that goes into that and the ridge on the side. So did they pay extra for the cap? They did. Let's open up the wand inside. So the wand itself is a traditional wand. I don't think it's anything custom tooled or anything like that. So do I think that they paid a little bit for packaging? I do just because of the cap, but not for the bottle itself. That's a stock component. Now let's talk about the product. So it's a cream product. And I'm looking at the ingredient deck in here. So the first ingredient is water. That's cheap, we know that. Hydrogenated didacane, it has mica in there, glycerin, squalane. It has a lot of standard ingredients here. None of these are standing out to be as being expensive ingredients in the ingredient deck. So the formula itself, I don't think they're paying really a ton, but you do get quite a bit of amount of product in here. It's one full fluid ounce, which is equivalent to what most foundations are. So you're getting a foundation's worth of product. For highlighter, I do think that is a decent amount of product. Like you guys know I love this. I've used it almost every day and I have not even barely made a dent in it. It. So this will last me for a very, very long time. But even with all of that, I don't think that they spent a lot on the formula itself. So when a brand owner is paying for a product itself, they are mostly paying for the labor to produce that makeup versus the raw materials. Unless it is something like those pearls that I was talking about or a very specific expensive ingredient. Most of what you're paying for for the manufacturer to make it is the labor for this to go through the assembly line, to be filled, to be put 
put in a box, you have another person that's got to put a label on the bottom. All of those things is what adds up to a cost of what a manufacturer will charge me as a brand owner to make that actual product. Now let's look to see where it's made. So this is made in Italy. So that means that they are paying a premium price to have it made in Italy versus again, having being made in say Korea or China. I'm not pitting the two countries against each other. You guys, this has nothing to do with anyone that's born or lives in either country. I want to be very clear on that. That's my disclaimer. I'm just saying from a cost standpoint. So now distribution, this is sold obviously in Sephora stores. So they are taking a cut to bring that product to the table too. Now with all of that being said, in my opinion, based on what I think the brand paid to make this product, get it in Sephora, have it made in Italy, the cap, the packaging, all of that in, do I think that this product is worth $49? I actually don't. I know you guys are like, what? But she so she uses this, she sells this, you guys. Me personally, I pay the $49 because I personally love the product. I enjoy it, I wear it all the time. It's a big bottle. I have literally had the same bottle for like three or four years now. So for me, it's worth it. I do think that if the brand charged $38 to $40 for this product, they would still be profitable and be okay. I think they're overcharging a little bit because of the name, because of the branding and all of that. So I don't think that it's quite worth $49. I think it was $10 less, that would be about the appropriate price that I would pay for it. Do I still love this product? I absolutely do. Now let's do a drugstore product because I, I want you guys to see the profit margins of a drugstore product. So I have the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation. It's one of my favorite foundations I love to wear too. This is $10.99, so $11 at Target. That's where I bought this from. Let's talk about the packaging. So this is a stock component here. It's a glass tube and the pump itself is black and it's a simple pump. This is all stock component right there. They they are not spending extra costs on the packaging itself. It comes with a black cap, which I lost you guys. None of that is upcharged. There's no custom tooling. There's nothing any fair fancy with that, which that is usually what you will see with drugstore makeup is why the pricing can be more competitive with drugstore is not necessarily the product itself. It's the packaging. They always go very simple, inexpensive on the packaging to keep those costs down so that they could sell that product a little bit less than a higher end product. Now the printing on here, I'm looking and the front of this this is a label and the back is a label. There is no foil printing. There's no hot stamping or anything like that. It's literally two labels, label, label. So that is really inexpensive to do. Labels are pretty cheap, especially if it's a clear and a white or a black label that's standard colors. There's no upcharge to that, but they do have on the label a little bit of gold in here. So that may be a very, very tiny upcharge to get the gold ink with the black as well on that label. But again, inexpensive packaging. Now the product itself, it is 30 ml. It's a one ounce of product that is standard size and the texture of this is like a standard matte foundation. We've gone over the texture, viscosity, and all of that. None of that really matters. I'm looking online at the ingredient deck. Water is the number one ingredient. Every foundation almost always number one ingredient water. It's cheap. <laughs> Cyclopentasiloxane, that's a silicone. It has dimethicone in there. It has some mica. Nothing in this ingredient deck to me is anything that is expensive. It's a pretty standard ingredient deck. So they are able to save money there. Now let's look to see where this is made. This is made in the USA. This is not made in China. This is not made in Korea. It's not in Italy. It's kind of the middle price point. So they are paying a mid-level range to have this product made in the USA. And then last but not least, this is in major distributors everywhere. It's in most drugstores, it's in Target. So they are having to pay to have this product distributed at major retailers. With all of that being said at $11, do I think this brand is ripping you off? Absolutely not. Their margins are super, super tight on this because of the distribution costs mainly because it's made in the USA. You're getting a full size, a full ounce of product in there. And even though the packaging is cheap, I think that they're paying so much more for everything else to warrant the $11 price tag. I think they can actually charge more for this product and be a little bit more comfortable. I think they're really, really tight on their margins to get it down to just $11. But the other thing really quick to say in mind with this too, with major drugstores, because the products are sold in so many places, they are able to get the cost down a little bit on raw materials and labor because they are ordering hundreds of thousands of units versus just thousands. Like an indie brand, such as like myself with Makeup Geek, my standard orders would be like five or 10,000 of an item. With some of these big, big brands like this, they're ordering like a hundred 
10,000 plus units of that product. And for a manufacturer to be able to do that many at one time, they're able to be really, really competitive in their cost and get that price down on the production side of the product. Okay, next what we have is now a luxury item. We've done some prestige brands. We did a drugstore. Now let's do luxury. So I have the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Highlighting Duo. Do you guys recognize this component? Do you see the componentry going here? Have you seen this before? So let me show you guys. It's the same component, so it's probably made at the same place, but one is just a little bit bigger than the other, but it is the same type of shape component. Okay, let's talk packaging. So on the front is a flat, it's not raised or anything like that. That is just hot stamped on there, that gold foil. It's not a super upcharge on that, but the plastic itself is color coded to be this custom kind of plummy, coppery brown color. So there is a slight upcharge in color coding it to that. You have on the cap here, this gold, but you see the logo is debossed. So they had to pay tooling costs to have that done as well as have the gold finish separate to the rest of it. So all of those things do add up on the packaging to be a bit more expensive for all those features. When you flip it around, there's a label. So labels, as we know, are not that expensive, but it is color coded to match the back as well. So that is not super expensive. It's a little bit of an upcharge to get that color coded. But again, labels are cheaper than having to run this through and have it hot stamp or foil printed on the back so they save some money there with the label, but it is color match. So the inside has a full size mirror. So they are paying a bit more for that. And then the same thing as with the Patrick Top Lush, you have two pans in here. So actually, now that I think about it, I think this component is stock to have two different pans in here. This one's a little larger though. So you have the product inside. It is 0.42 ounce. It's 12 grams. So there's six grams of blush in here and here. So those are pretty decent size for these highlighters. Now, if you guys can see on camera there's a texture on here anytime a brand has an imprint on top there is a cost for the tooling of the plate that presses it down so if it's just flat there's not really an extra charge for that but if they have a specialized pattern that has their logo it's a one-time fee for the place to be made so when it presses it it gives you that logo or embossed pattern in there so there's an upcharge for that because these are highlighters and there's lots of pearls in there, highlighters are generally more expensive to make than say a blush because again, all of those, we call them pearls, loosely pearls, are inside. Those are more expensive than a matte formula. So highlighters do cost a bit more to make. Now let's look to see where it's made. This is made in Italy. So they paid top dollar for where it was made. And then the distribution, this is sold, I bought this at Nordstrom. So they are in store. So they are having to pay distribution costs to get it out to the public so it's accessible to everyone. This is $90. <laughs> I cannot believe I paid $90 for this, you guys. Whew, what was I thinking? <laughs> That's expensive. Do, you already know my answer. Do I think this is worth $90? Even though they paid a lot for the debossing, for the imprinting on here, the custom color in here, it's a full size mirror, it's highlighter, so that costs a little bit more. They are overcharging you at $90 for this. What you are paying for on this product is the Tom Ford name because I don't think it's worth the $90. They charge more because they can, because they are a luxury brand. It's a really pretty highlighter. So I, I did buy it because I liked it because I'm a makeup geek, you guys, okay? I really like makeup and it was $90 and I wanted it. Would I buy more? I probably wouldn't. Anyways, with all of that being said, you guys, it really depends on brands. It doesn't matter if it's prestige, luxury, or drugstore. Any brand really can be ripping you guys off. It just depends on how much they're paying for their packaging, the product, are they distributing and mass retailers, what all is going into those products. So I'll try to do some more of these videos. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments below what other products you want me to do a price break. And this is the part where my camera shut down. Even my camera was tired of me talking. So enjoy the screenshot of my face as I talk. <laughs> but if you all enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to learn more tips and tricks in makeup, go to makeupgeekacademy.com and I will see you all in our next video. Bye!